Hi everyone, this is Studio Slave on behalf of ADSR and in this video we're going to take a look at file handling in Ableton Live 10. So as you can hear, I've got this chorus looped up and playing. I'm going to use this to show you some of the new export settings. So we'll just pause that there. I'll select this loop, go to File, Export. And here we can see that we now have the option to export a MP3 as well as a WAV. And further to that, we've got a few other things. So we've got the eighth and we've also got the FLAC uh, export settings as well. So we'll keep MP3 on and we could just export MP3. So this would be handy if you're uploading it to the internet or if you're working on something and you want to send it to a collaborator and you just need to do it quickly with a small file space and as quick as possible, then this is how you can do that. But in this case, I'm going to export both just so you can see. And we'll just save to this folder. So now if we tab across to where we saved those exports, we can see we've got both the MP3 and the WAV file in the folder in Finder. So going back to Ableton Live now, I'm going to show you how Ableton Live deals with saving and backups. So to do this, what I need to do is just make some edits to a MIDI clip so it's going to allow me to make another save. So I'll just go into this symbol clip here. And if we go to current project, we can see we've got this new folder here called backup. So this is our live set, as you'd expect to find in current project. We can see we've got our groups and our tracks. And if we now open this back up, I've now made a change that will let me save. So I'm going to click save live set and we're going to see that a backup has been generated. And if we move this and we do that again and we save, we've got another one generated and we can do this for a maximum of 10 backups are going to be generated. And if we open these, you can see that it's just like our live set and we can go back through and find parts that we might need to get back from our backups. And once we've got 10, it then just keeps going round in a cycle. And what's also really handy is if I do a few more edits here and then click save. If I did this in Ableton Live 9, I now wouldn't be able to undo what I've just done. However, in Ableton Live 10, it doesn't refresh the undo history when you save. So I can now go undo, 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 and then if I wanted to, I could even redo by using Command Shift and Z, and then undo again using the shortcuts. So that's a handy feature. However, it's worth noting that you can't close live, open it again, and then use the undo history. It's only for when you've saved. So you can't go back into your old backups and try and undo things. Next, I'm going to show you how Ableton deals with timestamping recorded audio. So what we'll do is we'll go to a part over here. We'll go for this wavetable horn. So I'll just play that. And while we're playing that, I'm going to make a new audio track. I'm going to set this to resampling. And I'm just going to record some of this. So as you can hear, we've got a lot of reverb going on on this particular horn. So what we might decide is once we've recorded this, we don't actually want this much reverb on this sound. So what we can do is stop recording. We can then get rid of this clip. So we'll just delete it. And then we can go onto our wavetable. We're going to get rid of the reverb units. So let's get rid of these and make it a bit more of a dry signal. And then we can re-record again. And now we're going to have the much drier signal. And we'll stop there. And when we record now, we're getting a time and date stamp onto the actual recording. So you can see that here. And if we look at the very bottom bar, we can also see that down there as well. And if we right click and we can either show in Finder or show in browser and we can also access that from here. So say we go for show in browser, then it's going to show us the file in the browser and we can see it's also got that timestamp as well. So if we decided we actually liked the more reverberated version, then we can get rid of that and I know that it's going to be this file here. So just to recap on that, when we record any audio, we're going to get the timestamp in the browser, 
on the name of the actual file and also in the sample window and if we consolidate the clip then it's also going to be in the clip header bar as well and it's just going to make it a lot easier for us to be able to go through all of our different recordings and pinpoint which one we're after. The final thing that's changed is the referencing of files has become a lot faster which means projects are going to open faster and they're also going to close faster as well. So for those of you that aren't already aware to see where you're managing your files if we go up here to file manage files it pops open a window here and then we can manage the set the project or the user library so if we go to manage project then from here we can look at the files within the project you can see we've got some unused files we've not got anything missing and all of our external files have been collected into this project so that's when we're doing a collect all and save we can also see we've got some unused files here we've got free recordings that aren't being used so we can click show and they appear in the browser and then we can just delete those out of the browser and that's going to make our project a little bit smaller for if we're collaborating and we need to keep the file sizes down so the reason i'm showing you this file management is because ableton live actually references files on your computer in your hard drive and it only pulls them into the project if you collect all and save and the way it references and loads these files is going to be much faster now so you should be noticing much faster loading and closing times for all of your Ableton Live projects from now on. So that's everything for this video on Ableton Live's file handling and I'll see you in the next one where we're going to take a look at the browser.